guys, welcome back to Mass Effect Come On and Slam Dramada. But before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe so I can prove to my parents I'm not wasting my life playing a game so bad IGN gave it a 7.7 out of 10. I always see comments about how I should have more subscribers, but what are you actually doing to get me them? Also, Vitor, please stop asking me to come to Brazil. I'm already here. We are back to take our motley crew of corporate approved misfits across this unexplored and untamed galaxy, except for all the people that are already here. But don't worry, they won't be here for much longer. Last time on Star Trek Deep 69, our hero Valiant caused the death of his own father, Pathfinder Alec Jones Ryder violated the United Nations Convention on Decolonization and exacerbated the Israel-Palestine conflict. Using AI and a dash of Sudoku, we discovered the entire galaxy is controlled from a single thermostat called Meridian. Now, after discovering the secret of the ooze and suppressing the proletariat on Kadara by banishing the communist revolutionaries, our search begins for a genocidal 5G tower known only as Hulahooped, as our heroes begin to wonder if the Belgians running the Congo didn't go far enough. All this and more on the thrilling conclusion of Mass Effect, welcome to the Jam Dramada. We still need to track down the Archon ship so that we can find the map to Meridian, which we need to colonize, uh, I mean save, the galaxy from the cat, who also came here to colonize the place, but are black, and therefore evil. I'm just now realizing this game is propagating fucking replacement theory. I also want to point out that the revelation that the cat are just transformed Angara has no effect on Angaran society outside of a single light courtyard debate. But once again, instead of tracking down the Archon and progressing the main story, PB suggests we check out a place called H-47C. But there's nothing to do here except hear your crew spaz out whenever no. you drive too close no. to a cliff or sometimes even when you don't drive anywhere near a cliff. But maybe they're just screaming out of boredom. I know I am. But luckily, Drax says he knows a place with actual stuff to do. Welcome to Aladdin, an entire second desert planet. Except unlike radioactive Eos, this place is completely uninhabitable because it's slightly too warm. Oh, that's hot. The initiative preferred a radioactive hellscape over southern Nevada. Upon arriving in Andromeda, the Krogan wasted no time getting oppressed again. And after leaving the Nexus to work on their persecution complex, the Krogan set up another entire ass colony here with absolutely no problems except for a power warlord named Hillary Clinton. We get a call from Jorgel Strux, who's determined to make Aladdin great again. Ryder, I finally found Hillary's email server, and all I had to do was sell all of our top secret files to Saudi Arabia. He says she wanted to use the raw power of the server core to blow up the Nexus, which sounds like an unironically great idea, and I wish the developers had straight up taken it and deleted the Nexus from the game. Unfortunately, this turns out to be a lie, and when we get to the remnant ship where the core supposedly is after solving the worst fucking puzzle in the game, the core is already gone. After combing the desert to fucking Afghanistan, we find a shuttle crash where the core was stolen from. After driving around for so long, I ended up in gentrified blood gulch. We find a secret GOP bio lab. The core was here the whole time, and Strux was lying to us about the bomb in a bid to seize control of the colony for his clan. Why did the Andromeda Initiative bring two rival clans with them? Were they trying to start a race war? <laughs> But of course, all these plot holes can be resolved simply by remembering the developers were French Canadian and are already divided between their loyalty to maple syrup and their passion for inventing new methods of discrimination. Oh look, Jorgel's gonna go for it. Luckily for Ryder, Clinton is a better fighter. Unfortunately for us, the player, that's not saying a lot. This looks like a stage fight. After watching my nephew smash his action figures together for a minute, Clinton banishes Strux. He was already banished. What is he, double banished now? Next time you better Pokemon go to the polls, motherfucker, and leave that core here. I've got some buttery mails to delete. Not wanting to have a planet of pissed off dinosaurs on my hands, I decided to just hand over whatever MacGuffin this whole thing was about. Damn, now I'll never know how many hot singles were in Hillary's area. But if you don't give them the core, the Krogan won't let you settle an outpost on Aladdin and you'll get jack fucking shit. There's literally no benefit to keeping the core except to be a dick. Oi, great job with that colony, mate. You really put one on the babby with this one. I just want to go home. Please stop talking to me. Oh, just one more thing. There's a remnant architect dangerously close to the colony, just about 10 yards away. I want you to go give him the old boomerang bash if you know what I mean. I don't, but I'm happy to commit some mindless violence. Now they want me to fight an architect. As a registered architect, I know architects are extremely easy to kill. I know this because the last exam in the Commonwealth of Virginia is a fight to the death. What I didn't expect was for the other guy to be a giant mechanical squid. But after suicide bombing my way through Elden Ring, this boss is so easy it's almost like I set the game on easy mode so I wouldn't have to deal with a horrifying upgrade system that's less user friendly than Windows 8. Also on Elden are those puddles of goo that the Turian Specter Avatus asked us to look out for, which means we can finally find the Turian Ark. Fun fact, all of the Turians have Latin names, officially making this the Italian Ark. But like all Italian forms of public transportation, the Ark is responsible for many, many deaths, including the Turian Pathfinder, making Avatus next in line. Ow. 
No, I, no, no, I'd rather not. Come on, Abydus. I saw you wiping out that indigenous community. Think of your ancestors. Christopher Columbus would have been proud. You were born for this. L look, man, I'll be honest with you. I, I just kind of came out here to retire. I didn't think I'd have to do a lot of work. You joined a colonial mission to another galaxy as a retirement plan. Yeah, in hindsight, probably probably not my best idea. After Abydus' induction ceremony as colonizer-in-chief, we get word that our sister Sarah Ryder is out of her coma. But instead of being there to emotionally support her, I'm going to find a ship full of sexy blue women. Today, on a below average episode of Star Trek The Next Generation, we're going to find Smurf Village to see what kind of fun whores have been unleashed upon the Smurfettes. This is very important to Korra, who trained with Asari Commandos if you didn't know. And through the power of editing out the boring parts, we managed to find the wreck of the Lusitania, a hulking mass of twisted metal populated by 10 instances of the same character model, including Videria, a commando so jumpy the sound of a door opening almost gave her a concussion, and the new Asari Pathfinder, Sarissa, who Korra will be sure to let you know is a big fucking deal. This intergalactically famous warrior Sarissa has led the Asari into a tactical situation Sun Tzu would have called a complete clusterfuck. But like any true leader, she knows how to pass the buck. Wow, you really fucked this one up, didn't you? Only been running military ops since before your ancestors were born. Yes, that's what makes this so embarrassing for you. Korra, with her magical biotic powers, and who trained with Asari commandos, by the way, idolizes them to the point she no longer identifies with her birth race and will literally absorb PB to become a monstrous human Asari chimera if given the chance. The previous Asari Pathfinder is dead after trying to make peaceful contact with the native peoples. She chose peace and was right fully executed for it. And now we're sent by the Ark's captain to clean up her mess through the laborious process of holding down E. We also learned that Pathfinder Ashara went out like a little bitch, begging Sarissa to save her instead of getting a map to the Scourge. This somehow calls into question Sarissa's ability to command, and now I, the person directly responsible for their Pathfinder's death, get to choose if Sarissa keeps her job. I think she made the only right decision, but I fire her anyway. You shouldn't have insulted my ancestors. Videria takes over as Pathfinder, but it doesn't matter since they all look the same. It's not racist if they actually do. With Ryder now in a psychotic mental state that mirrors my own, it's time to go attack a fucking Iowa-class battleship with a pleasure yacht to steal a native artifact for the British Museum. Using Find My iPhone, we track down the Archon ship, but when we get there, we see the Archon has helpfully located the Solarian Ark for us. So we pilot our massive spaceship right across his bow to dock with the Solarian Ark. This somehow goes completely unnoticed, and we manage to board the Ark. Here we learn the Solarians immediately surrendered to the Cat. Come on guys, I've seen Russian soldiers put up stronger defenses. Absolute shit-tier colonists for surrendering to the first natives they encountered. The Solarians may be pathetic weaklings, but they sure know how to fake their deaths well. We wake up the Solarian Pathfinder, Reka, and do a little trolling on the Cat battle Ship. After gunning down some scientists fleeing in terror, we find the Ket have been doing a little trolling of their own on these piles of Solarians with the intention of turning them into more Ket. But it doesn't seem to be working, as the Solarians are just too weak and cowardly. But this does retroactively justify our massacre of unarmed Ket scientists, because even though we didn't know at the time, they were all doing Rimworld-level crimes against humanity. But on our way to the Archon's private chambers, Ryder gets captured by a thing. Really not sure what this is. And, uh, that's it. They've got us dead to rights. Game over, I guess. Uh, Pathfinder, you've returned to admit the superiority of my 5G technology. Ah, shit, not this clown again. Moron says, what? What? Here, hold this needle in your neck for a sec. Yeah, what was that? It's a drug we invented called ketamine, so we can scan your brain. Right, uh, I am releasing amphetamine into your bloodstream in an attempt to counteract the ketamine. So, you've got an AI in your head feeding you all the answers, and an endless supply of Schedule 3 narcotics. Well, now I know your secrets. You don't know anything. I also see you have a sister. A twin sister. You still don't know anything. I'm also seeing a lot of dirty thoughts about your co-workers. Uh, harmless workplace fraternization. I can also see your deviant art account. Sam, kill me. Will do. For some reason, this tricks the sensors into dropping our now decomposing corpse. But just like the conquistadors of old, we've earned ourselves enough favor with Jesus by slaughtering heretics. So he resurrects us to fight for the glory of Christendom. If Ryder had a nickel for every time he died and came back to life, Mass Effect Andromeda would have been a profitable game. We make our way to the Archon's bedroom, where Sam roasts him for his collection of antique floating metal shapes. Bullshit. Bullshit. Derivative. That. I love, I absolutely love. After finding a secret map to Meridian by spraying hollow Skeddy all over it, the Archon reveals it was his plan all along for us to find his spy, break him for information, find the spy's phone buried in the middle of nowhere, trace it back to a ship, board the Solarian Ark, rescue the Solarian Pathfinder, mount a raid on the Archon ship, get captured, die, resurrect, break into the Archon's trash room, and hold my hand out. This guy's a fucking genius. We escape with a map to Meridian, but before we leave, we have to choose between saving Reka and saving some Krogan from becoming black. This is the Ashley Caden decision from Mass Effect 1, except now instead of choosing the person you cared about more, between a cute girl and someone who's not racist, it's choosing between amphibians and reptiles. If you read the wiki, you'll see there's only 1,200 Krogan actually in Andromeda, making them even more of an endangered species than they already were. But damn the sacrifice. Another Pathfinder is in dire trouble. Oh, Reka, you're fine. 
Oh, well, that's embarrassing. Drax seems really upset about leaving the Krogan behind to be assimilated. We could easily have split up. It was very possible for us to go in two different directions. Luckily for us, Drax is too codependent to stay mad at us for longer than one mission. Thanks for saving us, Ryder. And thanks for escorting us back to the Nexus. Wait, I didn't agree to that. I am not going back to that piece of shit. I fucking hate this place. I wonder if Strux really could have created a bomb powerful enough to do the funny. Also, I visited my sister in the hospital to cheer her up in the way she deserves. Hey, kiddo. Dad died because he packed a rock instead of a spare helmet, and we're all floating directionless on this arc waiting to die. Have fun with that. What? Doctor, the patient is hysterical. Put her back in a coma. We also visit Sam, who gives us access to the logs in our father's quarters and one final violation of his privacy. We rummage through his audio diaries where he rambles on about the government mistreating him and the end of civilization. That's when we learn the big twist. Mass Effect 3 happened. It's canon, everyone. But this revelation flips the switch on the Andromeda Initiative from Colonialism Vanity Project to Desperate Refugee Crisis and officially gives us the moral latitude to eliminate the Ket once and for all and claim the galactic thermostat for ourselves. After hacking into the Archon's mainframe, we now have the location of Meridian. But unfortunately, the entire station is surrounded by a Ket Armada. And to even select the mission, you need a college-level understanding of the law of rotational inertia. With the other Pathfinder's emotional support, we managed to sneak past the Ket using the novel strategy of not giving a shit and fly right past them. It's already worked once. After a short freefall, we find ourselves in the only city with a stricter HOA than Aya. Welcome to Meridian, a remnant city with the sort of dense city planning that would give the average San Franciscan a stroke. Well, that's actually not true. We're not really in Meridian. Apparently, this is just the control center, key to Sira, and we seem to be missing an entire planet. After holding down E for so long, social security went bankrupt. We get to the central command console, but to our lack of surprise, we need to go to that tower in the distance and hold down E some more. But to get there, we have to get through the Kabone people and more blue death. On our way to press E some more, we finally enter Smurf Village and learn that the Angara and their entire civilization were engineered by the Remnant. This has no ramifications on the story whatsoever. The Ket realize their occupation of Lisa Chanska's at an end and desperately counterattack. But just when things look bleakest, Sam pulls 30 flak towers out of his ass and shoots down the entire Ket fleet, which has the added effect of collapsing more buildings than the average Chinese construction worker. But before we can make our escape, a few more Ket decide they want to die, including the Archon Sword, who has the ability to turn invisible. But I solved this problem by blind firing my sniper rifle until I get lucky. After doing some bullshit, we are ready to pursue our final objective, Meridian. Before you do the final mission, have a heart to heart with your crew. Like Liam, who can't stop thinking about his car back home that doesn't handle like frozen ass. Do you want to bring anything like that with you? Yeah, but the weight limits were real strict. I'm sorry, what was that? But the weight limits were real strict. But the weight limits were real strict. What about the good luck rock? Plant some non-native plants with Korra, who served with Asari Commandos, by the way. That's a great idea, Korra. I love Kudzu. Do the best side quest, movie night, and console Jal for finding out his entire civilization was just a genetic experiment. But he flips it around on you by claiming the inheritance of the remnant is a species birthright. I'm sure that won't come back to haunt us later, and this tense alliance of necessity will be fine forever, just like Yugoslavia. Now we get to go back to Key to Sira. I'm looking forward to turning this giant pyramid into a bass pro shop eventually. Using the power of having our AI do it, we managed to track down Meridian, but at this very moment, Ryder loses his Wi-Fi connection. The loss of this connection to his smartwatch causes Ryder to suffer a brain aneurysm. I would ask Liam and Cora for help, but they're too busy checking their watches to give a shit about their commanding officer having a fucking seizure on the job. We quantum leap into the body of our sister on the human arc as it's being attacked by the cat, and oh god. Playing as the default Sarah Ryder in this game is like playing as the lead character of a fucking bowling alley screen when you get a strike. I have achieved levels of discomfort I thought was impossible outside of a TSA strip search. Mrs. Potato Head manages to reset Sam's access to the Pathfinder's brain, once again allowing him to resurrect him and ensure there is no end to his suffering. Listen, Sarah, they are going to take you, but don't worry, your brother has a particular set of skills. Yeah, like what? Sudoku. I'm screwed, aren't I? Uh... You are going to Brazil. You are all going to Brazil. Scott wakes up extremely hungover. Ugh, it's no use. Without our smart watches, we can't open these doors. Maybe we don't need our watches. Maybe I can open this door manually from this console across the room. Right, are you crazy bastard? You're killing yourself. I'm opening this door. Damn, that was a tough door. What are we supposed to do now? The Archon has the Hyperion, Sam, our sister, and about 20,000 hostages. But we have something he doesn't. A reckless disregard for human life and an army of killer drones. Channeling his inner Barack Obama, Ryder manages to take control of the drone army because that wedding isn't going to bomb itself. Ryder, you can't. Manually opening that door nearly killed you. Yeah, I know. If only there had been someone there to help me. But what if you die? What, for the fourth time? Who gives a shit? Upon tracking down the Hyperion, we find the Archon planning to use Sarah's implant to gain access to Meridian. Pathfinder, I've got your ship. I've got your sister. I've got your strategic meme supply. Let her go, Archon. Oh, did you say torture her some more? Yeah, I can do that. You're one sick son of a bitch. No, Pathfinder. I didn't make this sick, twisted world. Let 
blame the Quebecois. I just wanted to study my remnant artifacts, have my thermostat set to a comfortable 50 rads per second, and perform medical experiments on Solarians. All victimless crimes, but you forced my hand. And now I'm going to change the climate of every world in this cluster, which will vaguely allow me to accomplish my ultimate goal of colonizing the Helios Cluster. That son of a bitch. That's what we came here to do, but it's no use. A ragtag band of refugees can never defeat militant colonists, but when all hope was lost... Dad? Is that you? I'm a pioneer! I'm an explorer! You're right, Dad. I'm not some two-bit refugee. I'm a colonizer. I didn't come all this way to die. I came all this way to fuck shit up. Channeling the power of George Custer, we lead our forces in a suicidal charge to take control of a moderate amount of land. However, unlike Custer, we managed to squeak out a win by exploiting space cancer. I guess this was the Ket's trail of tears all along. Open a line. I want to gloat about my small tactical maneuver. Archon, don't blame your people. This clusterfuck is all you. Okay then, guess I'll just torture your sister some more. Using the Angara as cannon fodder, we destroy the Cat Armada and almost manage to reach the Hyperion. But before we can shoot it down and finally put this doomed colonial effort out of its misery, he forces Sarah to open the door to Meridian by torturing her with Ryder's deviant art posts. Welcome to Low Resolution Valley, where everyone we've ever met comes to reenact the ending of Mass Effect 1 by way of Halo. The Archon plans to crash the Hyperion and the universe's biggest case of insurance fraud, but luckily the entire galaxy shows up to stop him in this all-out battle for control of the Helios Cluster in this epic-ish final confrontation. On our way to detonate the fusion drive, Ryder and Captain Dunn simultaneously learn the benefits of seatbelts. We make our way inside the Meridian Central Vault, where we find spectacular vistas, a high volume of enemies, and an infinite supply of Milky Way Galaxy-compatible ammunition. Oh no, he's finally become Doc Ock. You know, Pathfinder, you've been a bit of a handful. You're too late, Archon. I've already depicted you as a soy jack. Hmm, no wonder your deviant art looks so bad. With this remnant technology, and your AI smartwatch, I've done it. Finally. 6G. The power of the Apple smartwatch is mine to command. My brother in Christ, that's not a data port. Those are 480 volt three-phase power cables. You are going to to die. What? Of the four Mass Effect games, three of the final bosses killed themselves, and with that we forcibly claimed the most powerful object in the galaxy for humanity. I don't see any future conflict arising from this. But here we are, the ending. To celebrate humanity's first car accident in Andromeda, we throw the lamest party in the galaxy. Tan and Foster also ask us who we should appoint as the Andromeda Initiative's ambassador. Because I'm not a fucking moron, I went with someone who actually fucking lives here. Tan takes umbrage with this, and Foster calls him a colonizer. That's the point, you colonial ward. No, 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 Foster, you can't do this to me. You can't become self-aware in your last line. But that still leaves a lot of loose ends that I forgot to mention because they destroyed the flow of the script, like the Quarian arc that makes no sense existing, or the murder of the Andromeda Initiative's founder, or Ryder's mom who's alive in cryosleep awaiting a cure for her unspecified disease, or the inevitable Angara attempt to claim Meridian as their homeworld by birthright, triggering a thousand year race war between the Angara and Milky Way species. Well, luckily for you, that's a story for Mass Effect Andromeda 2... Cancel. Mass Effect Andromeda is actually brilliant, except for all the parts that aren't, which is just everything that came on the disc. But through the power of digital patches, the game has gone from an unplayable marionette show taking place in an abandoned theater in the middle of the Uncanny Valley with enough bugs to make Todd Howard blush to a mostly functional single-player RPG. So to summarize, is Mass Effect Andromeda a good game? No, but it is an important game. It tells the story of a studio reaching for the stars and falling flat on their faces. <laughs> But eventually someone is going to make an open world space exploration RPG that doesn't suck galaxy spanning quantities of ass. We just have to wait for Starfield to come out to see if Bethesda learned their lesson. Spoilers, no fucking way they did. But that's not to say Mass Effect Enema is without merit. You see, the game is secretly a comedy game. Ryder might be the sassiest character in a video game since fucking Gex. Don't believe me? They are scanning us, Pathfinder. Well, scan them back. Need me to take my shoes off? Ryder should have been played by Bruce Campbell. This is my boomstick! But the game has to be bad, right? I mean, it killed Mass Effect. The thing about Shallow Graves is that EA loves robbing them. Am I really gonna defile this grave for money? Of course I am! <laughs> Honestly, once you get past the fact that Andromeda is a bad game, it's not actually that bad. The combat is dynamic, the narrative mystery is somewhat compelling, and the setting is fairly unique. All these corporate buzzwords combine to mean that playing the game is actually extremely bearable. So you know what? I say you try again, Bioware. Let Ryder wake their mom up from a coma, you dicks. I want to see the sci-fi equivalent of the French and Indian War. I guess the emotion I'm trying to articulate is... It isn't fair. He was so young and... Damn you! Damn you all!